Finally, the chapter one test review. What's been about a month in the works. We are finally ready to take the chapter one test. So we need a really good, a really solid review here. And that's what I'm going to provide you today. I'm going to give you a review of everything you need to know for the test. Most likely, if you're watching this, the test is probably tomorrow. So I'll try and be quick. I'll try and be efficient, but very thorough with my explanations. Let's get to it. I want to begin with fractions. In particular, fractions that have a common denominator. As you can see here, this fraction and this fraction have what we call a common denominator. It's the same number. So, all we do is realize we have the same denominator. Everything is in sevenths. We are now going to do five plus negative one. That's five plus negative one. We recite to ourselves different signs, therefore we subtract. Subtract means five take away one is four. Okay, the higher number here is positive. Five positives versus only one negative, the answer will be positive. Positive four on top, sevenths, or four sevenths. Meaning we don't have a whole one, we are close to getting a whole one, we're on our way there. Four sevenths, five sevenths, six sevenths. Seven sevenths is one whole. So you can see, putting into perspective here, we have four sevenths. A potential question I could ask is, is four sevenths greater than one whole? And the answer is no. Four sevenths is less than one whole because four sevenths is a fraction of one whole. It's not one whole. Now on your own, I want you to try these next three questions. This is sort of an easy, medium, more challenging setup here. So number one, hopefully you feel as easy. Please pause the video and hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, for number one, we realize everything is in eighteenths. We're good to go with that. So the answer is going to be something eighteenths. We have one plus five, which makes six. Now that is not an, that will not be an answer choice because it is not in simplest form. So to simplify, we divide by six. Divide by six, what we get is one third. So the next question, sort of your medium question, we have negative seven. We have minus four. We do notice that everything is in tenths. So we should point that out to you right here. So everything is in tenths, and we have negative seven and negative four. Clearly it's the same sign, so we're going to add those numbers and keep that sign. Seven negatives, four negatives, eleven negatives. Also not an answer choice because this is improper. So we have to make it into a mixed number, so ten goes into eleven one time with one remainder out of ten. It is still negative, don't forget that. And the challenging question of the group first must be fixed. So I hope you grab that first. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and make this into an auto plus. So I'm going to erase it and put a plus sign. So now I have a common denominator. Yeah, I do. Do, do, do. We have three on the bottom. We have negative two plus one. Negative two plus one. More negatives than positives. Also, different signs. This is a negative, this is a positive. Different signs subtract. So just do 2 minus 1, which is 1. And sign of the higher number, definitely negative. So negative 1 over 3, or negative 1 third. And remember, you can put the negative on top, or you can also put the negative right in the middle. Most textbook answer keys puts it right in the middle. Let's keep going. And let's address now fractions with unlike denominators, meaning the denominator of both fractions are going to, have, are going to be different, so we must find a common denominator, uh, denominator excuse me, using multipliers. So as an example, 7 eighths minus 1 fifth, clearly you see 8 and you see 5. Those are unlike each other. You're going to make them into the same denominator using multipliers. Multipliers of 8 are 8, 16, 24. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40. So in your head, you're thinking of all these, 
available options. These are all multiples of 8. And then you're going to think of 5 and all its multiples. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Right? You heard me say 40 here and you heard me say 40 here. That's a common multiple of both. So everything will be in 40th. Now how did I get there? From here I multiply by what? It was times 5. So times 5 up here as well. And when I say 35 40 like I'm doing right here, 35 40 is the same as saying 7 eighths. Same value, uh, just written as a 40th as opposed to an eighth. Then we have 40 over here. And we did times what to get to 40? It was times 8. So times 8 up here. That's 8 40 same value as 1 fifth. Bring that subtraction sign down. So you have everything in 40 to the final answer. You're going to do 35 minus 8, which is 27. 27 40 can that be simplified? Is there a number that goes into 40 and also 27? Divide by 4, yeah, but divide by 4 there, no. So that won't work. Um, how about 9? Nine? 9 goes there, but 9 here, no. It appears that this is in simplest form and would therefore be your answer choice. On your own, do questions 1 through 3. Hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Once again, question 1 I would say is on the easier side and it gets gradually more difficult as you go to number 3. I'm going to actually, I'm sorry, I apologize. I want a different denominator here. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Excuse me if you already answered it. Just go back and let's make that something uh, applicable to this problem set. Okay, try again. And we're back. So, number one says four ninths plus five sixths. We have six and we have ninth. That's no good. We need a common number, a common multiple of both. And I hope you thought of 18. That would be the lowest common denominator, also referred to as the LCD. So that's going to be 18 is the LCD, the lowest common denominator, or the least common denominator, LCD. Remember that. So 18, that was times 2, and then say times 2, that's 8. And then it's times 3, so times 3 up here as well. Everything is in eighteenths. So we're going to go ahead and do eight plus fifteen. And eight plus fifteen is twenty-three. Not going to be an answer choice because it's improper. Eighteen goes into twenty-three one time. Five five away from eighteen. I'm oh, sorry, five away from twenty-three all over eighteen. Number two, the one I fixed. So if you have not fixed this yet, please go ahead and fix it. I wanted to give it an unlike denominator, so I put a five there. So that requires us now to revise this question, revise our answer by multiplying by two and multiplying by two. Now over here, you don't need to touch this. Some people say times one times one, but you really don't need to do that because you're going to get the same fraction of nine tenths. So I'm going to say leave it alone as nine tenths plus negative six tenths. There we go. And nine adding a negative six. Different signs, subtract. Which is more powerful? Nine positives or six negatives? You responded nine positives. So the answer will be positive and a positive three tenths. Okay, the doozy of the bunch. So once again, that is going to become an auto plus. So I'm going to write that as an auto plus. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Common denominator is going to be 20. So times 2 times 2. Giving us negative 8 twentieths plus 8 twentieths. Interesting. How many twentieths is that? Well, negative 8 plus 8 is 0. 
and 0 twentieths is going to be 0 as your answer. Because you have none. You have 0 out of 20, so you have 0 as an answer. So I know some of you are saying, what about mixed numbers? We had so many questions with mixed numbers, aren't we going to have any on the test? And the answer is, oh yeah, you better believe we're doing mixed numbers. So now is the time for us to address the more challenging questions, the mixed number questions. Now, to this point, we have done addition and we've done subtraction only with like and unlike denominators. I'm going to stick with addition subtraction, but now I'm going to involve mixed numbers. And let's do that now. I told you to be careful with mixed numbers because they can be a little tricky, in particular when mixed numbers have different signs. So I'm talking about questions that uh, are not just straight addition, you know, positives and positives, and questions that aren't negative negative. I'm talking about different sign questions. So if you see a different sign mixed number question, that's when, you know, a flag has to come up in your head saying, uh-oh, something's happening here. So the first question I want you to look at right now is this question on the screen, and is that going to be an issue for us? And the answer is no. This is not going to be an issue because this question here is 3 and 5 sevenths plus 3 and 3 sevenths, and that's just plain old addition, addition. I mean, it's a positive here, and we're adding a positive, so we're not going to have any di uh, issues with questions like this with mixed numbers. What you can do with this question is take 3 and take 3 and you add them together and make 6. And then take 5 sevenths and 3 sevenths and of course make sure you have that common denominator, which you do. So 5, uh, five and 3 makes 8 sevenths and you're not particularly thrilled about that because this is improper. So 7 goes into 8 one time remainder 1 out of 8. So you just made this into 1 and 1 eighth. Let's go ahead and combine that with the 6, making it 7, and now 1 eighth is still left over, and that's your answer to this mixed, mixed question. Um, not a big issue. I'm going to show you another one that's not going to be an issue for you. So let's go ahead and do one more. In this example, let's say we have negative 3 and 1 eighth minus 2 and 2, mm, let's say, let's do eighths, just for the, make it simpler. Now with this question here, negative, negative, right? This is a negative 2, this is a negative 3, and you know, something, something. So with this question, we're not going to have an issue either because it's the same sign. So same sign, you won't have any mixed troubles or mixed problem troubles, <laughs> mixed number problem troubles, whatever, uh, because they have the same sign. So addition and positives and negatives and subtraction, just go in, you know, same sign, add and keep, and then just move on to the next question. So with, with this particular one, all we have to do is add and keep, 3 and 2 makes 5, uh, 1 eighth and 2 eighths is 3 eighths, and it's to stay negative, keep the sign. So once again, not a big deal here with same sign, add and keep. The issue comes about when we have those different signs, like let's say 5 and 1 eighth minus uh, 4 and 7 eighths. Now in your brain, process this. To make, f this is going to be a problem. People are going to get this one wrong. They're going to say the answer is 1 and something over something. And the answer is not 1 anything. The answer is actually less than 1. So, let me make sense of this for you. 7 eighths is 1 away from 8 eighths. 8 eighths would make 5 whole. So really, you're only 1 eighth away right here. And then you got, that, that puts you right at 5. And how far is 5 from 5 and an eighth? It's 1 eighth away. So now you're basically, you're expecting the answer as a math student. You're thinking an eighth and an eighth. I'm only 2 eighths away from getting from here to here. So the difference, the difference between this value and this value is 2 eighths, which of course is 1 fourth. Your answer is expected to be 1 fourth here, but so many people are going to put down 1 and something for their answer because they're doing 5 minus 4. 
And I'm telling you right now, don't be that person who does that. These are different signs. Let's treat it a little differently for these questions. So let's reverse here. Let's erase. And let's look at this question. And let's just go ahead and make everything improper. When we have a subtraction question, and it's a positive and a negative, which we have here as a positive and negative, then let's go ahead and just make them improper and take it from there. Improper, 8 times 5, 40, plus 1, 41. Not so hard. Still subtraction. Uh, 8 times 4, 32, plus 7, 39. Look how easy this is, folks. Did we say the answer is 2 eighths, which is 1 fourth? Look, 41 minus 39, 2. Everything is in eighths, eighths. Simplify, one fourth. Reiterating again, the answer is not one at all. The answer is a quarter. Let's give you something to do here. Here you go on your own. One through three. Good luck. Everything looks really solid here. So just do your best. Pause the video and hit play when you are ready to hear the explanations. Okay, number one. We have two and three fifths plus one and four fifths. We first look here and see fifths and fifths. We're happy about that. So, good. Hey, happy. There we go. All right. Then we're seeing, okay, positive here, positive here. Mr. Mashad said all I have to do is make my life, if, if that's the case, my life is really simple. Just add the whole numbers, which is going to be three. Two plus one is three. And three fifths and four fifths is seven fifths. And we're like, ah, seven fifths. That's improper. That's the same as one whole and two fifths. So we're going to take three, add one and two fifths, and that gives us four. Four, right? Three plus one is four, and two fifths. Four and two fifths. Four and two fifths. So not too bad when we have the same sign. Just because they're mixed doesn't mean they're all going to be difficult. Let's take a look at number two. Same sort of kind of deal with number two. You're looking at the signs again going negative, and this is negative. So we can do the same sign, add and keep. We are happy because we don't need to make them improper. We're not having any issues. Just make sure we add and keep that negative. The only issue we're going to have is really right about here and right about here. What's the problem there? The problem is we don't have a common denominator yet, right, times two times 2, and of course, this, this is going to give us a uh, tenths, so this is tenths, that's 4 tenths, so basically we have negative 1 and 4 tenths, we're going to add everything up here, add 5 and 1, get 6, add 9 and 4 and get 13, 13 tenths, uh, here we go again, no big deal, the answer is going to be negative, we know that, let's just make sure we have 13 tenths, which is 1 and 3 tenths, Add 6 and 1. Let me get rid of the negative so it doesn't confuse you. Add 6 and 1, which makes 7. 7 and 3 tenths. Final answer, 7 and 3 tenths. It is a negative, though, because we had the same sign. So we add and keep that sign. Okay, and now for the question that I hope you don't get wrong. Actually, if you just reason this question out, you're thinking, hey, think of money. 550, and hey... Negative five, or you owe five and a quarter. So if you think about that, there's no way your answer could be, well, we'll see. What, what could your answer be? It should be, it should be a quarter, right? If you think about it, if you owe this much, and you have this much, you basically have a quarter left over, but let's of course show this using fractions. So, Actually, this wasn't such a hard question. Common denominator is 4. So 5 and 2 fourths. And negative 5 and 1 fourth. And we have... So this is essentially... Here's what this is saying. 5 and 2 fourths, which is positive, right? And we're going to subtract, subtract 5 and 1 fourth. 5s are going to cancel... 2 fourths minus 1 fourth is 1 fourth. You know what, though? I didn't like that question that much. I think that wasn't really getting the point of the, the tougher questions across to you here. So let me 
Let me use one more bonus question. Here's my bonus question for you. 4 and 1 tenth minus 3 and 9 tenths. Pause the video, hit play when you're ready to answer this question together. So, did you put 1 something? I hope not, because it's not 1 anything. If you think about this, you have 4 and a tenth, right? 4 and a tenth and 3 and 9 tenths. The difference between those two numbers is not very far. It's definitely not one whole away. Do you follow here? Four and a tenth, just a little bit over four, and three and nine tenths. Nine tenths is so close to being four whole. Four and one tenth is so close to being four whole. So the difference between the two is very small. So the answer should not be one. I think I said like a thousand times. So let's just go and do the question. Improperize this thing. That's not actually even a word, I'm not sure, but let's make this improper. Four times ten is forty. Plus 1 is 41, all over 10, minus, this is going to be 30, plus 9 is 39, over 10. 41 minus 39 is 2 tenths. So the difference between this and this is 2 tenths, which in simplest form is 1 fifth. And there you go. Let's move on to multiplying fractions. Now this was not so bad because with multiplying fractions all you gotta do is multiply the top da 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 six. Multiply the bottom da 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 thirty six. Right? And then that of course simplifies and simplifies which makes one over six. And then we talked about, hey, there's a better way to do this question. You know what you can do in the same exact question. I said, we said, hey, there's this thing. It's called cross-canceling. It just simplifies your question ahead of time. So that would be a 1. That would be a 2. Divide by 3 as a 1. Divide by 3 as a 3. And hey -o, 1 over 6. You could have simplified before you got to this point right here. But am I happy with this? Am I happy with this? I'm happy with either answer, as long as you get it correct. So, it's your choice whether you want to cross-cancel and simplify ahead, or, or uh, simplify at the end, like this particular question did. That was the multiplying fractions lesson. It was, don't find a common denominator. Do not find a common denominator. Just simply, numerator, 6. Denominator, 36, and simplify. It's really that easy. So. We shouldn't make it any more complicated than that, and therefore, let's give you three questions to do. So here you go, one through three, pause the video, hit play when you're ready. Number one, three times one is three, five times two is ten, answer is three tenths. Done. Simplest form, yes. Number two, I'm going to say, you know what, let's cross cancel, it'll make our life easier. Divide by three is one. Divide by 3, which is 7. So the diagonals here can cross-cancel. You should do that if you can. Divide by 5 is 1. Divide by 5 is 4. Let's multiply those patriotic colors here. We're going to do 4 times 1 is 4. 7 times 1 is 7. Simplest form, yes. Okay, slightly more difficult here because of the negatives. So I'm going to highlight the negatives in purple. You know a negative times a negative is what? A negative times a negative is always going to be a positive. So you don't need to look at the sign. Uh, you don't need to look at the size of the fraction. It's not necessary. It's nothing like before. It's, there is no same sign add and keep business here. It's a rule. A negative times a negative is a positive no matter what. So you know your answer is positive. So what you could do is ignore the signs now and just multiply like you know how to. 6 times 1 is 6, that's 66, I realized I could have cross-canceled, I'm just going to ignore that for a second and come back to it, so divide by 6 is going to be 1, divide by 6 is going to be 11, answers 1 11, yes, we could have cross-canceled here and here, the 6s would make 1 and 1, and that means 1 times 1 is 1, and 11 times 1 is, 11 times 1 is 11, so there you have it. 
a negative times a negative was a positive 111. Let's fit in some mixed numbers now. So sticking with the theme of multiplication still. Now this is not as big of a deal. Mixed numbers here and multiplying, not too big of a deal. Because if we give you a question like, let's say, five and a quarter times mm, negative four and two thirds. Okay, one thing we're not going to do is we're not going to do five times negative four. We're not, not, do not, do not do it that way. What you need to do with all questions, excuse me, all multiplication questions that are mixed, you need to make them improper and then you need to multiply. So 21 over 4, got it, times a negative, this is going to be 12, and plus 2 is 14 over 3. Yeah, the denominators are different, but who cares? It's multiplication. So, can we cross cancel? We should if we can. 4 and 14 divided by 2 here is 2, and divided by 2 there is 7. The 3 and the 21, of course, divided by 3 is 1, divided by 3 is 7. We now have 7 times 7, which is 49, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, notice the sign here. This was a positive, this is a positive, and this is a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. So don't forget that at the end. This is not an acceptable answer for me. 2 goes into 49. 24 times making 48. 48 is 1 away from 49 all over 2. Don't forget the negative. So that's really the extent of mixed numbers. I'm going to give you three practice questions. I want you to try them on your own. Try these, do these, hit pause, and, hit, and then hit play when you're ready. Here we go, folks. Make them improper for all multiplication questions. It can be 14, 15, 16 over 7 times 8. That's 9 over 8. Cross cancel the 16 and the 8. Divide by 8 is 1. Divide by 8 is 2. 9 and 7, nothing happens there. That's okay. That ha that's no big deal. 9 times 2 is 18. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 goes in at 18, 2 times, which making 14, and 14 is 4 away out of 7. Answer. Done. Next question, we realize we have a negative times a negative, so our answer will be positive. And here we go. 18, 19, 20 over 3 times 16 over 5. Cross cancel. 20 becomes a 4. Divide, let's divide by 5, and divide by 5 is a 1. 16 and 3, nothing's happening there, so we're going to do 16 times 4, which is 64, all over 3, and 3 goes into 64. 21 times, making 63, which is 1 away from 64, all over 3. Positive answer, as we established earlier on. Positive, or negative times a negative is a positive. Slightly tricky, number 3, just slightly, because we need to know that 8 is the same as 8 over 1. So 8 is 8 over 1, so just rewrite it as 8 over 1. 3 and 3 eighths is going to be 24, plus 3 is 27. So it's going to be 8 over 1 times 27 over 8. Cross cancel that, so it's 1 and 1. That pretty much ends it there. 27 over 1, which is, of course, 27. Any number over 1 is itself. So that concludes multiplication with fractions and mixed numbers. We are going to finish things off in this particular unit with division. Now, you'd figure division would be the end of the chapter, but as we are fully aware, this is a crazy man, crazy person chapter, and there's so much more than just this. So, we're going to do division. We are aware that division is the same as multiplication of the reciprocal, and we're going to go over that again. So division is multiplying, and we just multiplied already, so... This is going to be sort of the same thing. Just remember to do multiply by the reciprocal. 
your standard division question as fraction, three-fifths divided by three-fourths. Now, with division, we keep the first term as three-fifths, we change division to multiplication, and we flip-flop the numerator and the denominator, which we call reciprocate or the reciprocal. Your book also calls it the multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. Um, all are fair game. So if I give you a question, hold on one second here. If I give you a question, I said, here's two-thirds. What is the multiplicative inverse? All you tell me is the flip of that, which is 3 over 2. And that's practice for this, which, of course, 3 fourths. The multiplicative inverse is 4 thirds. And division is multiplication of the reciprocal. Multiply now. 4 times 3 is 12. 5 times 3 is 15. Simplify by dividing by 3, which gets you 4, and 3, which gets you 5. 4 fifths. Yes, of course, we could have cross-canceled. I realized that. I just wanted to make sure you knew the answer is 4 fifths. Okay, that's division. Let's do a bunch. Uh, let's actually not say a bunch. Let's do one more together, and then you'll do a bunch. Here's the fun one for you. You have a mixed number divided by a fraction. Treat it just like we did with multiplication and make it improper. So call this 5 over 2. Still division for a moment here. We know that we're going to solve division by doing multiplication of the reciprocal of this, which is 2 over 1. This stays as 5 over 2. And so we're going to go ahead and multiply. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 over, I'm sorry, 10 over 2 is going to be 5. Yes, did I, I realize once again you could have cross canceled. Please do that. It's probably a better idea. I'm just showing you real quickly 5 over 1, which is 5. So no big deal there. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. You have 2 and a half, so you have uno, dos, and a half, right? And you're dividing into halves, so. Divided into halves. How many halves do you have? So divide into halves. And you have one, two, three, four. You have five halves. You have the answer, which is, of course, five halves. Very interesting, right? Let's give you a handful to do. I'm going to give you three to start off with. And, ooh, I just deleted the screen, but did I actually do that question 100% correctly? I had two and a half, right? Did I keep it as a negative? Because your answer should be negative there. So if I could just go back for just a moment here, to, you know, as I'm working through these questions, I hate making mistakes. I can't go back and delete them. The answer should be negative. We have a negative divided by a positive. It's a positive for sure. The answer is going to be negative. The same rules uh, for multiplication also apply to division. So whatever the rules were for mul multiplying, they apply to division, which means you can use the robot here because... A negative divided by a positive is a negative. So if I didn't put that in the previous screen, go ahead and fix that. It should be a negative 5. Okay. There you go. One, two, three. Try them. Do them. Make it happen. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and uh, answer these questions here. We have uh, division. So we're going to go ahead and make all division questions into multiplying by the reciprocal. If I had not mentioned this, it's stay, change, and then flip. Or keep, change, which we would already did there, and then flip, which we flipped 8 ninths to be 9 eighths. Cross cancel now, and you can only cross cancel when your question is multiplication. I'll say it again, you can only cross cancel when your multiplication, uh, when your question is multiplication, so make that a one, divide by four, make that a two. We have nine and nine cancel to make one and one. So what we have now is one times one, which is one, and one times two, which is two, and it is a negative times a positive, which is a negative, always. Number two, we have three fourths divided by. 7 6. The first thing you want to do is make everything improper. So now you can keep 3 fourths, change, and flip 7 6 to be 6 sevenths. 
cross cancel a little bit here, divide by 2 is 3, and divide by 2 is 2. You now have 3 times 3, which is 9. You now have 2 times 7, which is 14. You have a positive and a positive, so the answer will be positive. Keep, changed it, we flipped it. Okay, number 3, make it improper, that's 21 over 5, divided by, now this is negative 7 over 1, right, because this could be put over 1. So we have 21 over 5, keep, change, and flip, still negative, cross cancel the 7 and the 21 to be 1 and 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 1 is 5. It is a negative answer because a positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative. Okay, so hopefully you're satisfied with the division now. We did addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We did mixed numbers. We did fractions. It is time to do a little something a little different. I would like to practice uh, discount, markup, and sales tax. Let's begin with discount, in particular a question involving jeans and the 25% off sale. When we have a 25% off sale, we are referring to discount. So we're going, we are going to reduce the price of $67 by 25%. So the first thing we need to do is find out what is 25% of $67. There's a couple ways you can solve this question. You can use the window. Which looks like that. And then the window is of 67. And by the way, all discount markup and sales tax questions will be of. It's always of some value. So of that total. And 25% is going to go right there, so 25%. It makes sense because 25 out of 100 is 25%. To solve this using the window, you do 67 times 25, which is 1,675, and then divide by the number with the is, so divide by 100. And your discount is going to be 1675. Now hold that thought because that's the window way. Let's separate this and look at the other option, which I prefer. I prefer it because I'm going to let you use the calculator here. You know how to use the calculator. Just take 0.25. Of means multiply. 67. So of means multiply. 0.25. 0.25. Multiply by 67 equals same answer. Now, this is not what you're paying. You're not paying that, me that much money for the jeans, or that little money, I should say, for the jeans. This number here, it represents the discount. Okay, that's the discount. Meaning, you need to take the, the, the price before the discount, and then subtract 1675 So $67, original price, less 1675. This of course represents the 25% off. So you're going to reduce the price because it's discount. So $67 minus 1675 is $50.25. This is the price you pay for the jeans. Of course, in real life, I would add on tax. So you know what? Why don't I take this question to the next level and address sales tax? So here we go. This is really a subtotal on your receipt. I'm going to erase the screen here and talk about this price. So we got 50.25, right? That was the price after the discount. So you see in real life though, there's this thing called tax and you have to pay it. So let's say after the sale, after the discount, you have $50.25. You're going to have to now add tax to that, so you're going to do 6% of this price, of this what we call the subtotal. So 
So 6% of, once again, emphasizing of, everything is going to be of with discount markup, sales tax. Okay, 6%. I'll use the window again for those who prefer the window. 6% is over of. It's always going to be of. Which is 50, 25. You multiply the two numbers diagonally. This is just a shortcut. You get 301.5. You need to divide by the number with the is. Divide by 100, which gets you $3.015. Now, this is supposed to be money, folks. This is money. So look at the penny there, but really the penny is going to get rounded up to two pennies. So 302. That is the tax, which, of course, we will always add on tax. We will do that in a moment. Let's do the same question, though, now. 6% is 0 0.06 multiplied by 50.25. In your calculator, 0 0.06 times 50.25, 3.015. You see the resemblance here? It's the same thing. 302. It's money. So what do we do with 302? We add it on to the subtotal. So we're going to add now 302. And our grand total would be 50.25 plus 302, which of course is 53.27. Where can I put that? Fifty-three twenty-seven as a grand total. So I snuck in a tax question. So we did discount, we did tax. Let's just briefly discuss markup. This concept of markup I think of in terms of I am the business owner and I'm going to purchase uh, something. As an owner of a building, as an over of you know, Mr. Mashad's widgets. And I'm going to sell the widgets, and I want to make a profit on these widgets. So I'm going to mark up the price. If I buy my widgets, I don't want to sell them for the same price I buy them at because I wouldn't make any profit. So let's say I purchase my widgets for $3. And I'm going to mark up my widgets based upon the market. I know I can mark them up about 60%. So I'm going to do 60%, excuse me. I'm going to mark up. Sixty percent. So, in other words, how much will I sell these widgets for? Well, what's sixty percent of three dollars? You see what I did there? Sixty percent is a decimal of three dollars. That is a dollar eighty. Meaning, I'm going to sell my widget for. $4.80 because it cost me $3 to bring it in, marking up 60%, which is $1.80. I'm going to sell that widget for $4.80. The window works here as well for those who prefer the window. 60% of, of uh, $3 is what? You'll get $4.80. I'm sorry, no, no. You'll get $1.80, which you need to add on for the markup. So that's the markup, that's the total. That's the markup, that's the total. You're thinking in terms of you are the business owner. On your own, answers question one and two. Give me the sale price at the end here. So what I have here is a jacket for $213. Discount is 30% off. I then want you to take that answer and then apply to number two. And tell me what the uh, total would be. I want the total here uh, with a 6.5% sales tax. Pause the video and hit play when you're ready. Okay, let's get going here. $213 jacket, 30% off. It's going to be a reduction of 30%. So what is 30%? Ask yourself, what is 30% of 
2.13. You have to say that to yourself because it doesn't say of in the question. Say to yourself 30% of 213. 30% of 213, right? Or 30% of 213. The answer you're going to get is 63.9. Now be careful here. This is money, so you need to add a zero here, so it's $63.90. This is the discount. So, take your $213 jacket and reduce the price of that jacket by $63.90. You will get $149.10. This would be a subtotal because now I want you to actually tell me the final price after a six and a half percent tax which of course will raise the price a little bit so six and a half percent of 149.10 six and a half must be converted to a decimal percent to a decimal percent to a decimal go left two times 0 0.065 times 149.10. What you will get is 9.6915. Now, this is money. So, you're looking right here, here, here to here. This 1 will not affect the 9. So, just erase the 1 and the 5. They don't need them. You don't need them. 969 is a tax. So, take that 149.10. And now add 969 in tax for a grand total of 158, $158.79. And there you go. So that, that'll be the extent of the markup discount. And well, that, that, was, that question was a discount and a tax question. You saw the markup question previously, so let's move on to financial literacy. In other words, interest. We talked about two formulas. You won't have to memorize the formulas, but you will know how to use them. You have to know how to use them properly, and those, the formula is for simple interest, and that goes I equals PRT. We'll do one from that. And then we have compound interest, which is, let's change colors. The future value equals P1 plus R to the, excuse me, not N, to the T. Okay, so uh, what's happening here is we have two formulas for two separate uh, areas, simple interest, this is compound interest. Uh, how will you know which is which? Well, a simple interest question will say, find the simple interest. And a compound interest question will say something like compounded annually. Or, you know, it'll say very directly find the compound interest. So, let's do a, a practice question here. Let's say, for number one, um, let's do, let's do $350, 350 Let's say, for five at five percent interest for four years. Okay. Your investment is the principal. We call that P. Your interest rate is the R. However, it must be represented as a decimal. So 0 0.05. And last, your years is your time. T. And all you're doing with this formula is multiplying P times R times T. So P times R times T. So 350 times 0 0.05 times 4 years. It's really that easy. And what you get is 70, and that's $70 of interest. Okay, let's do the same question. 
Well, this time let's do, let's use the compound interest formula. So, if I could just actually go back a second. If you're making $70 in interest, and you put that much money in to begin with, your balance, you would expect it to show 350 plus 70. So you're thinking 420. Okay. Compound interest is going to put that directly to this point here. It's going to go directly to the end. However, because it's compounded uh, annually, this is an annual uh, interest rate, let's, um, let's keep in mind that our interest is actually making interest here, so you'd expect a higher value than 420. So the future value equals P. We know what P stands for principal, 350. Parentheses. This is 1 plus the interest rate. Once again, the interest rate is represented as a decimal. So 5% is 05. End parentheses. Little exponent there, which is four. What you have to be careful here though is is you need to do this first. So don't multiply three fifty until the end. You need to take one point zero five to the fourth power, and that's repeated multiplication, meaning it's one point oh five times one point oh five times one point oh five times one point oh five which gets you 1.22 approximately. The exact answer you get is 1.21550625, but let's, sorry about that. Let's, let's just round here to the nearest hundredth, and we'll stop there at the two. So this five makes this a two. Okay, so we're saying 1.22, and we have that was the result of rep uh, repeated multiplication. We do know that, reminder, this is not times 4. So if you do times 4, you're going to get the wrong answer. So we have to now take this answer here, 1.22, and now multiply by 350. And what we'll get is 427. So these formulas work a little differently. Although at the very end, you see you're going to make more money off the compound interest formula. You make about $7 more. Now, I'm not, ever, I'm not going to ask you, you know, what's the difference between using the simple and the compound, although you would make more with the compound. Um, just be aware that simple interest is going to be the small answer, and this is the interest made. Compound will give you a final answer, and that will tell you the difference between what you started with, which you started with this, the principle of what you started with. You invested it at an interest rate for a certain amount of years. You come back and you see that your bank statement says that. Or your certificate of deposit says that. Well, how much money did you make there? You made the difference between this and this, which of course is what? $77? So you made $77 here. Whereas you only made 70 there. Once again, I'm going to emphasize I'll be very direct and upfront about which formula to use. It's just you need to use it correctly. And the only mistake you can really make is forgetting to convert the, the percent to a decimal. People do that sometimes. Um, there were questions with months. So, for example, if I decided to be mean about this and to make it more challenging, uh, I could say, well, how about an investment of $925? Okay. Interest rate is 4.75%, and you're investing only for three months. Now, I said everything has to be in years. It does. So, T must be years. What happens when they give you months? Well, let's take it one step at a time. Uh, let's say this is a simple interest question. So, I'll say this is a simple interest question. So, you're going to take your answer is going to be uh, 925P. Multiply the rate. The rate is 0.475 and three months. Oh gosh, three months. How many years is three months? 
Three months is technically three twelfths of a year. So if you ever get months, just put those number of months over twelve because there are twelve months in one year. So you are basically talking about three twelfths of a year. Definitely not a whole year, but three twelfths of a year, which you need to simplify. And actually, if you want to simplify, you can, but just if you're going to punch it into your calculator, what is three divided by? Uh, we realize three divided by twelve is 0.25, so what you can do is 0.25 times 0.0475 times 9.25. Your answer is going to be ten dollars. You make about ten dollars and ninety-eight cents off that investment for that short period of time. So not much money. Okay, let's finish things out here. Uh, a couple more things. We have to look at percent of change. Uh, I could give you some practice questions here. We're already approaching an hour. If you basically understand the financial literacy we just went over, you should be just fine. And of course, look at the workbook pages we completed in class. Um, but what, let's move on to um, percent of change. And there's a formula for this, which I'll provide for you. But I really would like for you to memorize it. Percent of change formula is, I know it as end, take away the beginning, all divided by the beginning. So I know it's written a bunch of different ways, and this is the way I prefer to do it. So basically, if, let's say, mm, let's say you're working for Jamba Juice, and currently you're working, you work part-time, so you work... 25 hours a week. I guess that's part-time. Okay, so right now you're working part-time, but then you know you say, you know what, I want to get a new car, or I'm going to buy my first new car, and or my first used car. So I'm going to increase my hours to 40 hours. Somehow manage that and school at the same time. So by what percent did you increase because clearly there was an increase you went from a 25 hour, 25 hour job to now going full time 40 hours so there was an increase for sure but by what percent did you increase your schedule or did you increase the amount of time now you're going to invest so people tell me well you increased by 15 hours and I say yeah you did increase by 15 hours but what is that as a percentage by what percent did you increase so what you'll do is you'll mark your 25 hours is what you begin at. You'll mark your 40 hours is what you're ending with. So we're going to say 40 hours, the end, right? The end, which is 40, minus the beginning, which is 25. All divided by the beginning of 25. 40 minus 25 is 15. All over 25. This is the fraction which uh, you're going to divide out. Now, when you're dividing in your calculator here, you need to do the top first. So it's always the top, and this middle, and then the bottom. So 15 divided by 25, you'll get 0.6. This, of course, is a decimal. So from a fraction, you'll go to a decimal. I want the percent of change. So a decimal to a percent, you go right twice, which is 60%. You've taken a big increase in your schedule, you're now working 60% more than what you worked before, and that, I hope, does not uh, affect your grades. But lucky for you, this is a made-up scenario. So, let's do another quick example with percent of change, and let's say, let's say last year you made. $50,000. Um, for whatever reason, you're now only making $48,000. Maybe you work on commission, and this year you didn't make as many sales, so let's see, you now make 48. So clearly there was a drop but by what percent? You could tell me, yeah, my salary dropped, or my 
the money I've made, or I made, uh, it went down $2,000. We see that. But what percent change is that? Hence the word percent of change. So what we're going to do there is then call this your beginning, and it's what you end up at. And the formula is end 48,000, subtract beginning, beginning is 50,000, all divided by the beginning, which again is 50,000. 48 minus 50 is negative 2,000, all over 50,000. In your calculator, I want you to do 2,000 divided by 50,000, which is 0 0.04. It will be negative. The negative is reminding us that it went down. So if you want to put the negative in there, fine. We know it was negative. It should be negative because our salary went down. Down by what percent, though? Well, what is 0 0.04? Decimal to a percent, go right twice, that's 4%. Basically, your salary or your the sales you made, the income you brought in went down 4%. And that's percent of change. Once again, I'm going to stop a little bit short here with the percent of change and not give you some practice questions because we did a whole bunch of practice in the workbook on page 25, so I feel good about that. Um, if you've survived the video this long, try and just make it a little bit long because I'm going to pull up the test here and just give you some questions I, I think are worth looking at. Now, um, do we understand how to triple something? That's one thing I want to talk about real quickly. When you triple something, this is like a, just a free-for-all right here. So free-for-all, whatever that means. Here's a free-for-all. Um, if I have like a recipe and I'm tripling it. So let's say my recipe is for two and three fourths. And I'm going to triple it, meaning I, I want to make it for three times the amount. I'm going to multiply by three, which we're all comfortable with. It's going to be uh, eight, eleven fourths times three over one, which of course gives you thirty-three fourths, which of course is eight makes thirty-two. That's what tripling is. Okay, I'm not sure what happened to the video there, but tripling, once again, two, two and three-fourths multiplied by three. Eleven-fourths times three. Sorry if this is repetitive. Wasn't sure what happened there. Uh, eight makes thirty-two. Thirty-two with one left over out of four. Okay, so now, that's that. Let's talk about cutting things in half. In other words, if if I um, if I could ride my bike five and four fifths miles, and you ride your bike half as far, that's like dividing by two, right? Or dividing by two. See if you can ride it half as far as dividing by two, half the time of, of me. Oh, I'm sorry, half as far, half as far as me, which means you're half of this number here. What is 5 and 4 fifths divided by 2? Well, 5 and 4 fifths, let's go ahead and make it proper as 25, 29 fifths divided by 2, which of course is 2 over 1. Division, so it's going to be keep, change, and flip, which of course is going to be 29 over 10, which then is... Uh, goes in two times, makes 20, which is 9 away out of 10. So basically, you could ride your bike this far, which is half as far as me. Last question. If I am building something, and I have a big old um, block, and I'm going to cut from that block. In other words, I'm going to take pieces from that block. I'm going to divide this block up. See the keyword there, divide the block up? So if I'm saying, you know what, I have this huge block of wood, and this wood, this big board, has an area of 25 and a fifth. 
All right, and I'm looking to pull out little blocks of three and three fifths. Okay, so smaller blocks. I want to know how many little three and three fifths blocks I can pull out, or I should say slices I can pull out here. So when I say that, aren't I saying 25 and a fifth divided into three and three fifths to give me an answer? So it is division. If I'm trying to, you know, take pieces from a larger something. It's not subtraction. It's I, I want to know how many three and three fifths I can get out of this entire piece, which is twenty five and a fifth. So I think dividing that out is not a big deal. Just make them improper. One twenty six over five divided by fifteen eighteen over five. And you're going to uh stay change flip, which means stay, which means change, which means Five eighteenths, flipping it, and that's kind of nice because the fives are going to cross cancel, right here and here. Oops, right here and here. And then one twenty six over eighteen, and actually eighteen does go into one twenty six seven times. Okay, so this concludes the review for chapter one. Congratulations for surviving this entire chapter and in this entire review video, which is now approaching 68 minutes, which is well over an hour now. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully you're not watching this too late. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you when I see you. So take care. Goodbye. Have a great day. See you next time.